My name is Barbara Galland. I'm from the University of Otago in Dunedin. I work in the Department of Women's and Children's Health. I'm a sleep researcher there, um, particularly childhood sleep is my specialty. So sleep is incredibly important for a child's development. It is critical for their emotional and physical health. It enables a child to stay alert during the day, attentive to task, interact with the environment. It um, enables them to behave well during the day. And particularly for growth, it's incredibly important because growth hormone is secreted during sleep. So children and adults, of course, cannot do without sleep. So there's quite a very strong link between childhood sleep and obesity. Nearly all cross-sectional studies and many longitudinal studies show there is an association between poor sleep, and that's um, around sleep duration, short sleep duration, and poor quality sleep with the risk of obesity. So children, it depends on what age they are, but a, a, a child preschool age, uh, three to five years of age, needs approximately anywhere between 10 and 13 hours of sleep. It varies um, incredibly for the individual child. Um, and it's not just about the, the, time, the amount of time they get of sleep, it's also the quality of that sleep. So how, many, how often they have co consolidated sleep rather than waking up a lot during the night. So it's about quality and quantity. So there are two main types of sleep. There's the non-rapid eye movement sleep, which is a deep stage of sleep, and there is rapid eye movement sleep. So children have a lot more rapid eye movement sleep than adults do. Um, it's critically important for their growth, for their um, brain growth, and um, particularly for learning and memory and emotional regulation. So those two stages are around the um, quality of sleep that a child gets, and so they cycle through rapid eye movement and non-rapid eye movement. Uh, about every 90 minutes right across the night. So it's critical that they have both of those uh, to be able to function optimally during the day. A child that has good quality sleep will, be, will behave um, extremely well, will be attentive to tasks. Probably the question is more around how do you tell a child that doesn't have good quality sleep? And often the, there's a science, signs and symptoms of that. As adults, we tend to be really sleepy when we don't have enough sleep. Children tend to be um, that sleep Sleepiness is manifest as behavioural problems, so they tend to be more hyperactive, more impulsive, um, more inattentive. Um, there are a lot of signs just looking at the child's face in terms of whether they've had a good night's sleep or not. You get the dark rings under the eyes. And another problem, uh, one of the sort of common problems with children with, that have poor quality sleep, if they've got the, if their airways are obstructed, they tend to have um, be prone much more than adults to uh, having enlarged tonsils and um, enlarged adenoids and so there are facial features around that. You can pick up a child that has the mouth open, they have a long uh, long face which is called adenoid facies um, and they'll have very, very disrupted sleep during the night. A lot of it is around the parents setting limits around bedtime as well. So there's a lot of, uh, about 20 to 30% of children have um, sleep problems or parent reported sleep problems. So the key take home messages for parents are around looking at their child's sleep and ensuring that they have good quantity sleep and good quality sleep. So the things that can help with both of those is um, the, the sleep hygiene practices. So sleep hygiene are the, is the practices that promote good quality sleep. So you have to look about uh, look into things around exercise during the day, making sure the child has a lot of exercise during the day, promotes sleep. A warm bath before bed promotes sleep. So raising that core temperature enables um, not only children but adults to get off to sleep a lot easier. Um, then routine is re incredibly important so that the child gets to um, know this routine that happens before bedtime. So about an hour before bed, that routine starts happening. So the child gets in pyjamas, maybe has a um, bath, um, brushes their teeth, settles down into bed with a book, a book that's, um, that's not stimulating, something that relaxes them. So it's all about creating this really relaxing environment to promote sleep. Same thing in the morning when the child wakes up, we need to pull the curtains back and let the, the child know this is daylight, this is time to wake up now, um, we're ready to go. So all those associations with um, the environment really help a child sleep. But also a parent really needs to look at their own sleep because there's a really kind of vicious cycle around uh, problematic sleep in a child, can cause a lot of anxiety in the parent. The parent might be getting up several times during the night so their sleep is deprived. 
Um, so they're cranky during the day and that can influence their parenting that then influences the um, interactions at bedtime and so uh, and uh, becomes more problematic for both parties. So really it's about not only the child's sleep but also the parent's sleep. And certainly if they've really um, distressed about their child's sleep, problematic sleep, they certainly need to go to their GP to talk about it.